shaving his entire body. Shoe face slipping around like a little seal. Look at your little face. Oh, look at your little face. Oh, look at your little face. <laughs> The PFL regular season is just a distant memory and the playoffs are due to start this very weekend. We got some lightweights and some light heavyweights about to kick off three straight weekends of playoff action. If you're unfamiliar, PFL does things a little differently. They have a regular season where a few select fighters compete four points. The four fighters that gain the most points across their two bouts in the regular season move on to the playoff where they either win or they go home. And that's followed by one huge event, the PFL World Championship, where the top two from each weight class compete for a million freaking bucks. Big bucks. And a shiny belt, but... As I said in my Fame MMA reaction video, I love it when different organisations do different things with the format. Get creative. Give us something new. I'm here for it. And PFL is leading the way in its way of doing things. It certainly puts a bit more weight on each fight with very little room to make mistakes. So let's have a little catch up, you and me, a little catch up on the story so far before we talk about what's to come. Can check us out? The regular season brought us plenty of drama, to be honest. The featherweight division, for example, was like wide open anyone's game. There were no finishes in the first half. Then Chris Wade secured a six point win and Lochnane, Kudo, Jenkins all moved their scores up to a total of six to make it through to the playoff. But the heavyweight division, complete contrast, was very top heavy coming into the second half of the season with four of the five bouts ending in knockouts and three in the first round. One such knockout was a 25 second destruction of Jamel Jones by the terrifying six foot eight Hen Ferreira. Oof. I've been really in the field, I don't wish I let it feel lately, I just wanna run it up. We saw the second half kickoff with PFL 4 and Jeremy Stevens shaving his entire body in order to make weight and still not doing quite enough to make it through to the playoff. Just slipping around like a little seal. Martinez eked out a controversial decision win over Clay Collard despite Collard putting on the damage in round three. It was a good fight overall with a frenetic pace but when there is so much at stake those controversies probably sting a little harder. Shoe face put in the work and was well on his way towards getting a second PFL World Championship and a second million dollars. But following the regular season, had to pull out due to injury and is being replaced by Josh Silvera, son of ATT coach Conan Silvera, who will now face the Kmedov in the playoff. In fact, all three of those fighters involved in that little step pivot belong to the same gym, American Top Team. Meaning they might have a little bit of an intricate understanding of what makes each of them tick or go to sleep. And we saw Anthony Pettis come back looking to prove that you know, if the hype was real last time, maybe it just took a little longer than expected to materialise. Royal Mail might have fucked up delivery somewhere. We know he has the skills. We know he has the experience. We know he's a fucking legend in the sport. Nothing's gonna take away from that. He just couldn't pull it off last year. Last year was his first PFL season and everyone expected him to just 
Orchid. He's Anthony fucking Pettis. But he lost both of his fights in the regular season, didn't even make it through to the playoffs. And obviously, he had to make some adjustments between last year and this year, mostly to his mindset. He said, just like everyone else, he thought he'd just walk in, do his thing. His thing being dynamic striking, black belt BJJ skills, athleticism, and finishing prowess that got him the UFC, GFS, and WEC championship belts to hang on his wall. He even has a submission win over Charlie Oliveira, but his opponents in the 2021 PFL championship said nah. They forced him to go back, look at the holes he needed to fix. He hired more coaches, made sure everything was about him this time. Not sure who stole his limelight last time, but I hope you feel bad about it. The losses made him work harder and we have already seen a different guy in the cage this year. When he fought Price, he was a lot sharper. You know, sometimes you just got to take a step back to take two forward. He's just had a baby. His brother is killing it in Bellator. His motivation this year is so much higher. Here comes Flumpy. There's Flumpy. There goes Flumpy. And his knowledge base is larger. He's got a legacy to protect. It's not just about redemption. He's Anthony fucking Pettis. <laughs> Showtime Pettis. He has his own kick. In fact, Anthony Pettis is one of MMA's best kicking specialists. He's landed devastating kicks on his opponents over the years. Look at your little face. Oh, look at your little face. Oh, look at your little face. Joe Lozon, Donald Cerrone, Danny Castillo. To name just a couple, have all been defeated by Pettis by head or body kick. And he wants to add another, a fourth variation to his little belt collection, of course. And like I said, he was looking real good this time until he came up against another UFC veteran in Stevie Ray. Ray dropped a unanimous decision to Martinez in his first PFL fight. So he needed a big finish, an early stoppage, in order to make it through to the playoff. And that's exactly what he did. Vaulting right over Manfia with a second round modified twister. And on the same card that we saw Ray upset the apple cart, we also saw last year's heavyweight championship winner get outworked by a fighter literally punching above his own weight. The 2021 championship fight between Bruno Capaloza and Ante Delia was a swang and bang affair. The first half of the fight was nothing short of epic with both men landing huge punches and really doing some damage. Capaloza took over down the stretch though and secured himself that win, that belt, that million bucks. But it was a bit of sweet victory. Just moments after the judges announced the decision, he was told by his family that his father had passed away. Not wanting to add any extra weight to his shoulders, distract him or even tempt him to throw away his dreams, hop on a plane to, and go home to be with his dad. His family chose to keep the news from him until after the fight and Capaloza was grateful that they had. But his father was the one who had shared this martial arts dream with him. And they had an incredible relationship and imagine not being able to celebrate the greatest moment in your career with the one who'd helped you get there. And imagine having to come back to carry on that dream without them. You have to wonder how it's going to affect him this year. We've seen tragedy like fires under athletes, but we've also seen them overcome with emotion, unable to separate their pain from the task at hand. And we've seen them walk away because this is something that they shared with the person that they'd lost. And it's not the same doing it now that they've gone. Despite that, Bruno got his second PFL season off to a great start with a first round knockout of Stuart Austin that got him six points. But adversity can come from the most unlikely of places. 
and Bruno's came in the form of a fighter from a lower weight class. Scheffel, technically a light heavyweight, and he dropped his first matchup in the season, so there weren't many that expected him to give Bruno Capaloza any kind of trouble. And yet he went in there and outgunned the former champ in a three round war. They spent almost the entirety of the fight on the feet with both guys having their moment, but it was the power and volume of Sheffield that got him the win in the end. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough for him to punch his ticket through to the playoffs, but you can bet he still felt pretty damn good about it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I interrupt this broadcast with some breaking news. Bruno Capaloza is only out of the bloody playoffs due to an in indisclosed, <sighs> undisclosed injury. And just like that, that dream we just spoke of with all that weight, emotional and physical, it's heavyweights, is over, it's over. It's done and dusted. It must be a really hard pill for him to swallow. He's just faced adversity after adversity and we can only hope that it will fuel him to come back better, stronger, even more determined. So the new playoff standing is Scheffel Goltsov. So Scheffel alternated wins and losses pretty much in his last five, but maybe that's because he was fighting in the wrong weight class. Um, he's got a 69% knockout rate, so that's something to watch out for, for Goltsov to watch out for, and, uh, but he's never, he's never finished anyone by submission. Now, Goltsov has remained really consistent this season, but his opponents have just been way outmatched, like, he was the massive betting favourite in both of his regular season matchups, so you could say, you could say, that he's had a bit of an easy ride to the playoffs and maybe that's about to end. Let's hope he doesn't count Sheffel out like many did against Capaloza because we've seen how well that works out. I, you've got to kind of root for him I guess because this is his third time trying to win PFL big boy bonanza so he's got to be hungry for it and the pressure's got to be on I suppose. Back to what I was saying. So that weekend was all about the underdogs, all about the redemption story. We fucking love it, don't we? But can those underdogs keep their good luck, I don't want to say luck, good work going, keep that momentum through to the playoffs? Question mark. Let's talk about that last minute switch up that I alluded to first. Josh Silvera is 9-0 as a professional and two-time champ under the LFA banner. This guy though. The 29-year-old prospect has won two in a row since joining the organization with two stoppages. But Akhmedov is a huge step up in competition for Silvera. He was a long-time veteran of the UFC. He's got a 23-7-1 record and the experience to really wipe the floor with Josh. He holds victories over some massive names and that one draw on his record came against Marvin Vittori. And it'd just be nice to see him cap off a really long career with a big payoff. I think Medov's experience will get him the win. However, as I said earlier, these two train at the same gym. So it could come down to who was paying the most attention and who has managed to turn that valuable insight into action. When it comes to the Pettis Ray rematch, just a couple of months after the first fight, most people seem to still be backing Pettis. The modified twister that Stevie Ray pulled off is such a rare submission that you'd be forgiven for thinking a little bit of luck, a little bit of fluke was involved in that, and maybe he won't be able to replicate the results second time around. And Pettis probably isn't going to allow himself to get caught in that again. He said himself that it was a dumb mistake. He initiated the takedown and caught Ray in a single leg. Ray's knee was between Pettis's legs and instead of fighting for the underhook, he let Stevie whizzer him and take his back. And because the position was so uncommon, Pettis couldn't defend it. He went to turn, made it worse by like twisting his spine and Stevie went 
over his head and put incredible amounts of pressure on his ribs. And of course, Pettis was aware of a previous rib injury he had and the fact he needed to fight again in just a couple of months. And so we tap. We've seen it a couple of times now, last season, now this season. The consideration of how tight the scheduling is, is affecting Pettis's fighting. He's being cautious. He's not fighting freely. He's overthinking. He's playing it safe. He says it won't be a problem again, but we'll just have to see if he makes the necessary adjustments in his mindset. After all, the playoffs aren't the end of the story. It does seem pretty much a no-brainer due to how crisp Pettis was looking on the feet and how well Stevie was able to control Anthony on the ground where each fighter will be looking to take this next fight. I'm just excited to see how it plays out. Beyond that, I think Wilkinson is going to walk his fight. Like, his opponent only got into the playoffs by fighting a guy on a losing streak who had one functioning leg. And Wilkinson has looked so good in his last two fights. It doesn't feel like this should be too much of a test for him. But again, if that underdog story continues throughout the whole PFL run, I'll be eating my words. And I hope the Urban CA fight is more exciting than the last one. But maybe his strategy is to play it safe, and so far, so good. If you want more, you greedy bitch, I will link that Fame MMA reaction video for you, and a nice surprise other one, so you can indulge until you bulge. Gross. But before you do, before you get all gross, like, subscribe, come hang out over on Instagram, and I'll see you with a new one next week. <laughs>